Good evening. Happy uh, Wednesday. Ooh, uh, I did some political work after work. You know, I full time job as a lawyer, right? So I came home. Then I did some mass emailing to my friends, political friends. Pretty much all the political friends that, that I know of. Yeah, invitation to this candidate event, right? Um, yeah. Also to say them thanks. <clears throat> wow, a lot of work. Oh, because I know many people. Okay. Oh. Still recovering. So okay. Um. I'm gonna give you like five minutes speech, okay? So what what I'm gonna say for five minutes because there are many candidates, okay? So I will try to make it as entertaining as possible because I want to entertain the audience, all right? I'm a performer, actor, okay? <clears throat> so uh, yeah, oh, long day. Superman training, right? You know, running a campaign, oh my goodness. Having a full-time job and then running a campaign, <sighs> Superman training. About three months left. Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Suan So, and I'm running for Alaska State Senate this district. And um, thank you for coming, and thank you for this wonderful organization uh, hosting this event. And um, so, I want to ask uh, my fellow colleagues here, my candidates, other than me. So, is it okay uh, to make some jokes about you? Ladies and gentlemen, and maybe make some constructive criticism. Yes or no? Huh? I'll be gentle. All right. So, uh, there are about four or five things that I will not do during my campaign. All right. First, uh, I'm not going to take donation from people, campaign contribution, because I believe money belongs to people. All right, so I don't want to take their money, okay? Second, I will not take any volunteers for my campaign. Why? I believe time belongs to the people. Time is money, right? Yeah, okay. Third, I will not go knock on the doors of people's private premises to advertise my campaign because I believe in people's pri privacy and their private property, okay? Fifth, I will not put big road sign with my name on it. I will not put my name on the roads. Why? Because I do not want to put my name above and beyond other people's names. I want to humble myself, lower myself, and put their names above myself. And my campaign is not about me. It's about you. It's about people. Okay, I'm running for an office, so if I become elected, I'll be a public servant. I will be serving you, so you will be my bosses. You will be above and beyond me. So, my campaign is not about me. So that's why I don't put my name out there. Because it kind of can give that kind of impression. And I don't, I'm not that kind of person. Alright? So, my campaign is not about me. It's about people. The people, for the people, of the people, by the people. Okay, so that's uh, that's my campaign idea. Okay, now there's some materials uh, on the table over there. I have this one-page biography and one-page uh, statement of purpose, and plenty of campaign cards. All those things I made with my money and my time in my house using my printer. Okay. Everything, yeah, I did all by myself. Okay, so, um, 
So I have two minutes left. Um, so what do I stand for? Uh, I think I need to disclose this because you're the voters, so you have right to know what I stand for, right? Uh, it's a little bit difficult to say because um, after hearing this, you may not vote for me, okay? But you want me to be honest? I'll be honest, okay? I'm moderate, conservative, okay? Uh, there are some Republican Party platform that I don't quite agree with. Why? Because I'm not some part of a big machinery. Okay? I have my own agenda. I have my own ideas. Okay? Yeah, most Republican Party platform, uh, the laundry list, I about 90% I agree with. Okay? But there are 10% I don't quite agree with. Uh, you want me to tell you what that issue is? Uh, I, I, I'm not going to tell you. Okay? So... Uh, but if you look up my name in the internet, yeah, I, I, there will be some internet articles that I wrote in local newspapers, and then you, you will see it, okay? So, um, it's, to me, it's something very natural, because we are human beings, we have own thoughts, so, uh, but you and I are different, in, depending on the issues. But we, we can still be friends, right? So I uh, just want to disclose that to you. Okay? Yeah, I'm very experimental kind of guy. So uh, I like experimenting. Okay, all right. Thank you. Good night. Bye. So that's five minutes. And tomorrow I'm going to have haircut. Okay? So it's, it's, it's getting too unwieldy, too hot, too messy. And yeah, my parents were right. I should have a haircut once in a while. I checked the barber shop. They're, they're open, so tomorrow I'll, I'll get a haircut. Okay. Yeah. What else? Let's take a break, okay? I'm not exhausted, but I need so I can use some break, okay? Oh boy. We'll take a break and I'm gonna sing a song. Alright? Can you guess what song that would be? <coughs> How about Paul Simon? Alright. Yeah. Graceland. Yeah, I, I, I was singing, singing that song, okay? So let's take five minutes. Whew, I'm st still reeling back, recovering from all this campaign activity. Oh boy. Oh boy.
So no more politics, okay? Not tonight. We want to talk about humanology and mathematics, okay? Let's escape from politics. <laughs> yeah. Let's just sing a song and then <clears throat> we get back to humanology and mathematics, okay? Uh, let's escape from politics. Please. Whew. Um, um, Paul Simon. I gotta censor this a little bit, okay, because some of the lyrics is kind of improper, so, um... <sighs> so why this song? Because I feel like escape, okay, all, from all this political campaign, just for a moment, just for tonight, I don't want to think about politics anymore. Not tonight. <coughs> That's why. Yeah. Da -da -dun 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 -dun. Cha -cha. Fantastic percussion and bass guitar. Dun -dun -dun -cha -cha. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Electrical guitar. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun the Mississippi data was shining like a natural guitar. I'm following the river down the highway through the cradle of civil war. I'm going to Grassland, Grassland, Memphis, Tennessee, I'm going to Grassland. Do -do 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 -do. Purples and pilgrims, families, we will be going to Grassland. My traveling companion is nine years old. He's a child of my fourth marriage. Do -do 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 -do. But I've reason to believe we both will be received in Grassland. I like that. We will be received in Grassland. Like, we'll be welcomed. I really like this song. Okay, so. Yeah, that's what, what I want to sing. So. <coughs> Just want to sit back and relax. <sighs> yeah. Alright, I have two things to talk about in uh, human analogy, okay? First thing, causation tracing, causation backtracking, okay? So, we see all this protest today, right? Now, these days, about this Minnesota event, I mean, not event, but incident, okay? Uh, so, what's the cause of that? Before that happened, it, there was coronavirus. People just piling up all this pain and suffering, locked down in the house, so they are bored, okay, frustrated, so they are angry, all right? Negative copium, pain, right? So then, so there was like a pile of matches, okay, you just need one trigger, lighter, to lit it up, and it suddenly burn and explode, right? So, and also during the coronavirus, People lost jobs, so they need food. So looting, stealing, theft, okay? As a, yeah, this protest as an excuse, okay? So, but before that, what's the causation of that? People staying at home. Uh, well, because first, they are ignorant, because they are too lazy to study in school, learn science. Second, they are too weak, why? So they don't want to exercise. Why? So what's the causation of that? Yeah, it's lack of discipline. 
So what's the causation of lack, lack of discipline? Uh, it's the machines. Our parental, grandparental generation, they worked so hard, they invented all these machines for us, and they just left us with this technological inheritance. So we just inherited it for free. Cell phone, computer, internet, cars, airplanes, everything, right? So all we do is just sit, sit there. At home, we sit in the couch, watch television, we have remote control. When we go to work, we sit in behind the wheel in a car. When you are, came to work in the office, we sit there in front of the computer. So physically inactive. Life is so easy, that's why we are weak, undisciplined. We are like spoiled child of rich, wealthy parents, hard-working parents. We just inherited <coughs> material, technological wealth from our parental, grandparental generation. That's what happened. Right. Now, recursive Gaussian, okay, uh, There's no other way I have to bring bring this whiteboard, okay? Recursive bell curve analysis. Recursive Gaussian analysis. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Our discussion still borders on politics a little bit, but that's fine. Because there's some mathematics in there, so right? It's this. What is recursion Gaussian, uh, recursive Gaussian analysis, recursive bell curve analysis, like bell curve, Gaussian curve, normal di distribution curve, same thing, right? All right. So, I need more space than this. Yeah, this is a heavy whiteboard. <coughs> okay, never mind this umbrella numbers raining down. Okay, never mind that. That's not what we're doing. We just have empty space here, so okay, we don't need too much space for this. Very simple concept. Sounds very technical, but it's not. All right. So recursive Gaussian analysis. So you have Gaussian curve. First of all, you have political polarization, left and right. Okay, and you have number of people. Okay. In Republican Party. Say this is one, and this is two, okay? Republican Party, it looks like this, you have right and left, okay? Political polarity. <sighs> okay? One person is moderate Republican. One person, far right. Two people in the Republican Party, they are more right, more conservative than totally neutral. Okay, so that's Republican Party. All right, Democratic Party. One person is far left, one person is kind of neutral, and two people are more left than totally neutral, okay? Now, independence, undeclared, unaffili unaffiliated.
one person is kind of moderate left. Two people are totally neutral. And one person is moderately uh, conservative. Okay? So in the left, you have far left, moderate left, and neutral. On the Republican Party, you have neutral and moderate conservative and far right, like extreme conservative. Okay? Now, we have to, we have to add this up to see the total gen demographics in politics. Okay? What is that? <clears throat> so, uh, Republican Party, okay, you have one and two and one. It's a modeling, okay? That's why we simplify. Democratic Party, you have one, two, and one. Moderate, you have one, two, one. If you add them up, <coughs> it becomes one, three, four, three, one. So this, now we have Gaussian, right? Yeah, it will look like this, okay? Okay? <coughs> Meaning, most people are in the middle, alright? Some people moderate left, some people moderate right, and but very few far left and very few far right, okay? So, yeah. Gaussians inside of Gaussian, okay? So that's recursive Gaussian analysis. Huh? That's what I wanted to say, okay? Uh, let's take five minutes. Okay? Oh, I'm exhausted. Yeah, we'll take five minutes. Uh. It, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's take five minutes. Whew. Uh, after break, we talk, want to talk about power shift. Right? Yeah, Mr. Evan Toplo, kinda.
So, <clears throat> power shift is like this, okay? Uh, Mr. Elvin Toffler, the futurist, did I read that book cover to cover? I think so. In Korean translation, when I was in high school, I think I did read that book from cover to cover. And also, The Third Wave, Future Shark, I think I did read from cover to cover at least once, each of them, I think. Or at least I tried, right? They are very insightful books, right? About culture, history, science. Kinda. Before I even talked about there is this, I think he was journalist or something. He wrote about this law of entropy. Okay, he tried to apply this second thermodynamics law and try to apply that physics concept to explain cultural phenomena. All right, that was a very popular book in it's probably in the nineteen seventies or eighties. Law of entropy, something like that. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I don't remember his name though. Okay. <clears throat> so, and Mr. Apentoflo, uh, he basically, uh, it's about talking about culture, science stuff. Okay. Every once in a while, uh, some popular books about that. Uh, Quasi academic, not strictly academic, but semi, right? Cultural commentary analysis, right? Yeah. So, uh, I'm not exactly sure what he meant by power shift, but we we'll adopt that at least the terminology. Okay, so, met, yeah, ideological power shift. All right. So you have some ideology. Right now, it's all about anti-racism. All this protest <laughs> initiated from this incident in Minnesota, right? So that's the mainstream cover media coverage. That's what everybody's talking about, right? Yeah, the most popular news topic, right? Anti-racism protest, right? Before that, it was all about coronavirus. Before that, it was all about gay marriage, right? But as time goes by, those fad trend. People lose interest. Why? They've been reading about those gay marriage way too often, like transgender, LGBT. They just they fed, fed up with it, okay? And because they they are new, they were new, but it's been there for a long while, so it's no longer new, and it doesn't have any substance in it. So as time goes by, it get replaced by some other brand new ideology. So those, uh, it's ideological bubble, right? Ideology that does not have any substance, it doesn't last very long. Okay? It just comes and goes. Because the only reason they are popular is, is novelty. It's brand new, right? But just because it's brand new, yeah, it stays unnumbered. It, it's, it's been there for a couple of years, people are fed up with it, so they don't want it anymore. So they move to the brand new topic. Yeah, even like Bitcoin, right? Again, ideological bubble, no substance, right? So, <clears throat> next, coronavirus, right? And it goes away. Next, anti-racism. It will go away too. Why? Because it has no substance, right? There's no such a thing as racism in America. Right? I don't know about other countries, but in America, there's no such a thing as racism. Right? It's all uh, empty claims. Okay, let's do some. Then why, if it's not racism, then why African Americans are poorer than Caucasian Americans? Okay, let's do causation tracing, causation backtracking. Okay. <coughs> So today, uh, blacks are poorer than whites, in, on average, right? Why is that? Because 
blacks used to be slaves or whites. So there's unequal pay, labor exploitation, and so whites inherit wealth and blacks inherit poverty. Okay? Okay, then why, how come blacks became slaves by whites? Uh, it's because white people had technology, military power, cannons, guns, when blacks did not have technological advance like white people had. Okay, then how come white people had technology when blacks didn't? In Africa and in Europe, uh, it's because white people, they studied. They learned from brown people, Middle Easterns. Uh, black people didn't. Okay. Then wh how come black people did not learn from uh, Middle Eastern science and engineering when white people did learn from Middle Eastern brown people? <coughs> I guess their focus was different. Black people in Africa, maybe they are more interested in uh, arts and music as opposed to mathematics and science and engineering, right? And in Africa, black people, the weather is warm, it's hot, right? There are plenty of animals, plants, so they didn't have the need to maybe farm too much. Maybe they can just hunt and gather. Maybe they suffice enough, enough to survive, right? In Africa. But European, Caucasian, maybe they needed, felt the need to <clears throat> learn some science and mathematics and engineering because the way up there is very cold. So perhaps they didn't have enough food and shelter. They had to learn engineering, how to build houses, to keep themselves warm. So the root cause, difference in climate in Northern Europe and in Africa. Africa is warm, hot all year round. So they don't feel the, they don't have the need for too much engineering because it's warm, plenty of food, right? But in north, up north, it's cold, so they need warm fire, fuel, and nice house for insulation and good clothing, and they don't have much food maybe, so they need some more artificial farming, okay? Yeah. Well, just one theory, right? Okay. Bottom line, it has nothing to do with race. Okay. <coughs> it's all about the dif difference in their environment. And okay. So that's the uh, causation tracing, causation backtracking. Okay. We go back in this cause and effect chain, go back, 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 all the way back. All right? All right. <clears throat> so nowadays in the media, right? If somebody say black lives matter, and we agree, of course black lives matter, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So today is today. Yeah, black people commit in terms of percentage in jail population. Blacks are overrepresented. If blacks are ten percent in American population, in jail cell prisons they are like thirty percent. So they are overrepresented. Okay. So by percentage, uh, black people tend to commit more crimes than whites. Why? Because it's not because of racism, but because uh, they are they have less money. Okay, than whites. So when people are poor, uh, they tend to steal more. Okay. Yeah. So how about this slavery problem? Well, it's back in the days. We don't know who's descendants of slave owners. 
okay and also labor exploitation it's not just white people on blacks it's white people on white people labor exploitation back in the days it was everywhere in every different races okay yeah blacks on blacks in africa okay labor exploitation that's just how it was back then okay so and um you cannot just take white people's money and give it to blacks that's not feasible okay and yeah i don't think that's gonna happen all right so in the media yeah when people say black lives matter and yeah we all agree yeah black lives matter okay but when people say white lives matter then all of a sudden this person is racist i don't think that's fair that's not equality that's inequality that's like giving blacks more rights superior right to as opposed to whites whites they should have inferior rights so they should never say white lives matter if you say so then you're racist that's not equality that's not fair right so but we kind of understand as humanologists why why uh, because yeah black people are I mean, on average, they're poorer than whites, so let's give them some more love than to our white people. We kind of understand, kind of even the ground kind of concept, right? Yeah, we understand where, where do they come from, okay? So. It's based on sympathy, basically, right? <coughs> yeah, we don't understand. Let's take five minutes break, okay? Right. I, I promise you not to talk about politics. <coughs> but it's easier than mathematics, so uh, I'm sorry. We'll take five minutes, okay? So, yeah. Okay.
So let's talk about Vincent, Vincent Van Gogh, all right? Um, <clears throat> because that NPR episode about Vince, uh, the geniuses, it was very nice program, okay? And some psychologists, they have very good insight, okay? So although we don't always agree with their methods, all right? Psychologism. Yeah, but we do appreciate, okay? Maybe there, there's some validity there, okay? Just a little bit, I don't know. But uh, we don't take psychologist's approach, okay? And we just don't. We do our own things, all right? So, they talked about Vinland and Van Gogh suffering from multiple mental diseases, this laundry list of diseases, mental illness, okay? I don't think that's fair to say. They say this study night is out of this mental disease schizophrenia or whatever right and i don't think that's fair to say okay when you see a picture of vincent van gogh why do you have to psychoanalyze him and characterize this painting as a product of some mental illness i don't think that's fair okay i think it's more like a de deformation and detraction deformatory characterization and i don't think that's fair all right Vincent Van Gogh, he drew these paintings because he studied fine art of the day, right? It's about this, what, pointillism, something like that. Yeah, you have a lot of dots, like green dots, I mean, yellow dots and red dots. If you look at it from far away, it looks like orange, right? Pointillism, something like that, right? He studied that stuff, okay? so. He was influenced by other artists in his time, okay, so that's the correct characterization and, uh, yeah, causation tracing, okay. For psychologists, I, I guess, who make all these comments about Vincent Van Gogh, his art being product of his mental illness, obviously they don't understand fine art, Western fine art history. So they're kind of ignorant, right? So I, I don't think that's correct characterization of Vin Vincent Van Gogh's painting. No, it's out of ignorance, right? They just look at Van Gogh's painting with the psychologist's eyeglasses. So, and that's biased and that's unfair. <clears throat> that's prejudi prejudicial, right? To say the least. It's like you have this big kinds of moose, Alaska moose, and they're a bunch of these ticks, blood suckers, mosquitoes, swarm, right? To suck blood of this big moose. Kind of remind me of that, right? Yeah, Vincent Van Gogh is genius. He should be characterized as a genius, not mental patient, okay? He has some problems, but yeah, so what? Anyways, what else? Uh, yeah, let's do some mathematics, shall we? Because we didn't quite hundred percent understand our equation that we came up with. So uh, let's escape to mathematics, okay? So. Okay. Whew. Let's see what's going on. Yeah.
Okay. Where's my spruce tips? Vodka. Oh, right here. So the kappa, sorry, kappa function, that's the trickiest part in, in the equation in this multiplicative partition counting function, all right? Um, it's not closed form because it's kind of recursive, but that's fine. Why is it recursive? Because it depends on the, well, not exactly recursive. It just depends on this uh, partition set function, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. But it's an equation nonetheless, so. So pi is additive partition vector, right? In a non-decreasing order. Okay? So that's what pi is. It's a vector. Additive partition vector. In our example, it's partition of 5 because we are doing number 2310, which has 5 prime numbers in its prime factorization. Alright? So. <coughs> By the way, I, I bought this today. Alright? from Walmart. It's like $11. I love how empty shirt. Uh, they're, they're beautiful. Okay. Let me take a picture of that Gaussian, recursive Gaussian, okay? So. I'm not gonna write that down, no. It's too elementary. Goody goody. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember what, what's going on here. All right, so. All right. 
Whew. Let's uh, take it nice and slow today, all right? Because, oh boy, I, I was busy. Busy at work, after work. Busy with my campaign. Oh boy, yeah. So, yeah. Now I fully understand that function that we came up with. Okay, it's all coming back to me. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sigma pi, you it's so you're just adding all the elements in this vector. Okay, so that's what sigma pi is. Yeah, it's this guy. All right, <clears throat> you just add them up. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. So next step in mathematics is the uh, we we've been dealing with uh, square free numbers that we call pure composites, where in prime factorization primes does not repeat itself, right? But square full number or impure composites. Uh, that well, uh, at least one prime repeat itself in a prime factorization. Okay, so that be our next logical step, and uh, we'll take a shot at it. Okay, because now I, I I remember what this formula is about. Okay, so okay, yeah, I think we are ready. Get we are ready to tackle that next problem. All right, so we'll just take like five to ten minutes break. Okay, so because oh man, I had a long day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Uh, maybe we'll talk about cancel culture. That's kind of catchphrase nowadays, right? Sound by cancel culture. I was wondering what it is, okay? So and so I asked my friends, right? So and they explained to me cancel culture. But I I did look up, but they didn't quite explain it very well, okay? But my friends, especially my friends who are younger than me. They kind of know exactly what that is, okay, but Wikipedia or in the website, they don't quite explain very well, but my friends, they explain to me very well, okay, so. <coughs> because they're younger than me, so they know, they, they know what's going on better than I do. I don't know what's going on. It's not, I'm kind of belong to old generation, right? I'm old school, so young people. Yeah, they, they, they belong to this generation, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I have many friends who are younger than me, okay? So. Yeah. All right, let's take five to 10 minutes break, okay? So, I, I'm gonna stop and restart because I don't lose the footage, so.